Hi, welcome to the Nova TCAT tutorial. Today we're going to show you how to set up a 3D MOSFET. The first step is to create an empty simulation directory where we're going to be working. So let's do that on the desktop. After that we start the main interface to the Nova TCAT. This shows you the available process flows that you can use while working with the software. The first option you have is to work as you would in a foundry, starting with the masks, doing the growth, and then doing the electrical simulation. The second option you can do is to set up the device layers directly and then doing the electrical simulation. Today we're going to do the first step. In the Mask Editor program, you have several options available. Ma main use of the Mask Editor is to import GDS files that are used in industry to de define the mask layouts. Here, this is a very simple device, so we're going to draw our own masks. First mask we're going to draw is the STI mask, which is for the uh, shallow trench isolation. So, we're going to correct our initial uh, rectangle and put it exactly the right size and right position. And then we're going to add two more masks. The second mask is going to be for the polysilicon gate. And the third mask is for the uh, source drain implant. Now that we've drawn our mask, we're going to zoom in to the default area. And this will be the simulation area for our process simulation. Then we're going to save uh, our, but before we save our masks, we're going to change the labels to make them easier to understand. So we're going to relabel our first mask as the STI mask, and then we're going to go into the purpose to change some mask properties. So in a real physical process, STI means etching away a certain region, regrowing, and then using a CMP to remove any excess materials. Here we're going to cheat and use the change material purpose, and which is a so shortcut. So we're going to etch away the silicon and change everything in a certain region to a depth of 0.3 micron into silicon oxide. Our second mask is for the polysilicon gate. So this mask has a different polarity than the others. We'll put it as type P. Type P means that the area that we've drawn on the screen is the area that we want to keep. So we're going to change the purpose again, but before we define the property of the mask, there are some steps that are going to be taken by C Supreme before the mask takes effect. So the first one thing we want to do is to add a slight uh, a small diffusion process to grow a dry oxide layer. So for 10 minutes uh, at 950 degrees, after that, we're going to deposit our polysilicon gate. And we, do, we also have to make sure to add the dopant, which is uh, grown, uh, the, do, the dopant is added in situ during the uh, deposit, deposition process. Now, be, as I said, these commands have to take effect before the mask. So we add this little checkbox at the bottom, and then we go back to our layer properties. So the purpose of the mask is to etch away material. So this is going to take effect after the deposition. So we want to etch the polysilicon everywhere except the mask that we've drawn. And then we also want to do an oxide etch. And we're, uh, we've estimated there's uh, the oxide depth to, but we're going to do a slight over etch to make sure that it's all removed. 
Our final mask is for the source drain implant. So we're going to use an end polarity mask because the drawn area is the area that's exposed to implantation. So all implantation is done using general purpose masks. And this includes by default a one micron thickness of photoresist. So implantation is done in several steps. The first thing we're going to do is to do a shallow implant for the uh, lightly doped drain using phosphorus. Then every time we do an implant, we need to do a diffusion step to activate it. But before we do diffusion, we always, ha always have to remove the photoresists. Now that we've activated the, uh, the phosphorus, we're going to do a deposition step for the nitride spacer and do an etch command to remove part of that spacer and allow uh, an opening for the source and drain implants. So the source and drain are implanted using arsenic at a much higher dose and this is going to form the contact regions for the source and drain. Again we do a slight diffusion step to activate the new implant and then we do a final regrid to refine the mesh near the PN junctions. So this time we're not going to check the box that says before mask layer because the implantation is done after the layer deposits the photoresist. The next step is to define the mesh in the device. But before we do that, uh, just a reminder that when you're using mask, you're looking at the top-down view of the device. So the horizontal axis corresponds to the X direction. The Y direction is uh, perpendicular to the device looking down and the Z direction is our, our a vertical direction. So the, when we're going to use the basic mesh button we're going to define the initial XY mesh in the substrate. So here we define the number of mesh lines that we want in the X and Y direction and we also define the initial thickness of the substrate. After that, we define regions where we want the mesh lines to be especially dense. We use select x equal 1 so that the mesh is denser in the middle, and we select y equals 0 so that the, the mesh is uh, dense near the channel region, which is at the top of the initial substrate. The last part of the mesh that we have to define is in the z direction, but before we do that, we have to save our existing work. Now we use the 3D Save and Cut button to automatically generate a sample longitudinal mesh. Here we have four mesh planes, so four mesh points in the Z direction. In the middle you'll see two lines which are very closely spaced because this is the interface between two mask layers. Now we've done all we need to do in Mask Editor, so it's time to go to the next step. So we go back to our original window and launch C Supreme. So then we open the, our initial directory and here we'll see several files. The geo files contain mesh generation information that was generated by C Supreme. What we want is the main file, which is an empty template generated by Mask Editor. 